So one of the uh, sources that is quoted most often actually as a kind of proof that the entire system of the WBMP must be wrong uh, are the directions for using Melson's metronome. So here it is, if my computer wants to work with me one time. So here it is. Um, directions for using Melson's metronome or musical timekeeper. So that's a publication that's, by the way, often this, this, um, ascribed to Melson itself, but it most probably didn't wrote this or didn't write this article, but at the, at the minimum we can say that Melzel, if not approved this, there is no actual article or counter article that he wrote against this. And by the way, these directions are published in German twice. Um, I believe, just quoting from memory, uh, once in Vienna for sure and in other place in Germany, but I I don't remember which place, it doesn't really matter. So um, I made a video on the Melzer directions a few years ago, so I will link it here. And if I forget about doing that, you will certainly find that. And uh, on the new website, I will bring the Melzer directions again. But I will make another really um, complete video on the Melzer directions because in the book, uh, not, there's nothing wrong with the old video, but in the book we will have we will present an extended version of what we already had. In fact, Lorenz found another text by Melzel, which is really, really an additional layer of information and proof that this text is actually 100% about whole beat and nothing but whole beat uh, to what we already had. So what I would like to do in this video is not to um, spend too much time in detail on the Melze directions in uh, its entirety, but go directly to the, uh, the passage, in fact, where everything comes together for people to uh, the passage that actually, in the eyes of many, debunked the entire whole beat uh, uh, system. The thing that triggers people, people to take this text as an absolute proof for single beat is that the term single beat is in it. It's very important to always look at the entire passage, the entire document, and actually the entire context in which it was published. But now, Again, we are focusing on this one passage and we leave the rest for uh, for another time or you go to the other video that I already published. At the end of the text of the Melzer directions, the author says, it being well understood that in this, as in every other case, each single beat or tick forms a part of the intended time and it is to be counted as such but not the two beats produced by the motion from one side to the other. Now, before diving into this, it's very important to realize that this, these instructions are written for composers. How composers should use the metronome. And it's at the very end that this is like as a final warning or a final like, and by the way, this kind of stuff. So. When we look in detail what actually is written, the sentence, each single beat or tick forms a part of the intended time. This is a textbook definition of the whole beat concept. The key word of this sentence is not so much single beat, but is part. So, single beat or tick it's first of all let's bear with me a little bit it's first of all an explanation of beat so when people say beat it's single beat always no it's not true vibration oscillation vibration oscillation the battement all these terms um they are used in multiple meanings schlag schläge so you have to see the context in which authors use this term whether it's, it's it's a single swing or a full swing um, most often terms like vibration oscillation vibration oscillation they do mean a full swing but it happens many times as well 
even in one text that vibration is single swing oscillation is full swing there was not kind of defined terminology meaning that's a correct explanation to those terms and the confusion can be seen here beat or tick when the author says each single beat or tick it is undoubtedly it's undeniably what the author means he means the ticks of the metronome each tick and then it comes forms a part of the intended time just by me reading it a few times you already now now know where this is leaning to where this is going through each tick forms a part of the intended time so what is the intended time what does he mean by time if you would like if you would ask a native english speaker he would say time is tempo of course it is i've seen some explanations sometimes where people say time is actually bar yeah what that would be of course when this text would say each single beat or tick is a part of the bar then we have to admit that at least the possibility of a single beat description is there but it doesn't say that he says part of the attendant time and now if you have this text in the context of instructions to composers how to set a tempo indication how to convert a tempo an ideal tempo into a metronome mark then we're speaking about tempo and the intended time related to a metronome is of course the metronome mark what else in this context could intended time be it's also interesting to note that in one of the two german translations the translator leaves this passage out as being like completely redundant why do you even mention that and the other is actually translating this correctly as zeitmaß so time translated into zeitmaß means zeitmaß means tempo so the intended time the intended tempo part of the metronome mark but if you have a metronome mark and a tick forms a part of that it cannot be 15 percent it cannot be a quarter it's half of that that's the only solution that's the only possibility that's the only way you can read this sentence correctly each single beat or tick forms a part of the intended time had he written half of it it would be crystal clear but in fact there is no other way of understanding it it's either the full part of the intended time or a part and a part is half so it's a textbook definition i would say of a whole beat description but the question then is why adding this to the Melzel instructions to the metronome and the reason for that is not so hard if you are aware of the history of the pendulum and people think when the metronome came the pendulum disappeared it's not true um on my blog post but i changed the website you will find you won't find it anymore i will just re-upload that and in the other video you will see also there i present you for instance the patent of schwecker it's like 1889 or 8088 it's a pendulum patent so a pay patent filed in for to protect a pendulum so it was not all metronome marks in the 19th century though of course Melzer's metronome uh, conquered the world and in an astonishing um, uh, speed but when you have a pendulum when you want to have very slow tempi then the rope would be very very long even if you would like to go to 60 on the metronome that would give you one one meter 43 centimeters or something but if you want to go lower than that like 40 it's i don't know it's like two meters or something so it's very impractical practical so what what did these metronome or the pendulum builders do they actually um, stopped at 80 frequencies per minute and they said whenever you have slow tempi and you will see that in the tracker patent then you just double the frequency you have to count double which is a lot makes sense right 
when your metronome or your pendulum is beating in 80 beats, single beats per minute, and you want to have 40, you have to take twi uh, twice of that. With the metronome, that's no longer necessary because of the double weight system. You have a relatively small device that can give you speeds in that time up to up to, uh, uh, until 50 and later, of course, 40, but relatively in a small device. But people apparently were used to double the slow tempi frequencies, but it's no longer necessary here. And if you read it from this perspective, it being well understood that in this, as in every other case, each single beat, so each tick forms a part of the intended time, regardless of the speed that you have, you have to, you have to understand that like between brackets and is to be counted as such, but not the two beats produced by the motion from one side or the other. So in every, in, as in this, as in every other case, each single beat and not the two beats produced by the motion from one side to the other is a part of the same of the of the intended time with the metronome that's no longer necessary so um i thought it's inter interesting for you to um just make a little like 12 minute videos or 30 minute videos focusing zooming in on this one sentence i will do that for some other sources so that i do not have to present the entirety you can go to the other video again but make you see if you're new here you might not even have seen the other uh, video on the 1860 mail instructions so that you are aware of whenever you see this pop up on your screen, whatever platform you're visiting as the ultimate proof against whole beat that it's actually the reverse. The 1860 Mel's instructions are one of the key sources in understanding the whole beat system. And then I've not, I've left out actually the body of the text where it's actually proven that in order to read this text without you know, uh, inconsistencies in the text, you have to assume that the author started from a whole beat system, but that's for another time. Okay, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, go to Patreon. If you haven't checked our Patreon page, I'm updating there the uh, way of interaction. We have some cool new projects there as well, but that's for another time. Anyway, thank you for being here and we see each other soon again. Bye.